I bet with Interbet only. They're a fantastic site. I've never had any issues with them. They are very professional. There's never a problem. You deposit money, two seconds later it's in your account. You withdraw, which I do very occasionally. And uh, I believe it's also two seconds it's in your account. Moving on to race number three, it's the Tab Gold Card Call FM88 Handicap for Phillies and Mares. It's over the 1400 meter trip and it jumps at 1325. The current favourite is number six, Patton's Tears from the Lucky Hudelakis Yard. And that's trading at around about 22 to 10 in the betting market. I thought this was a very tricky race if you look beyond number six, Patton's Tears, who represents some good recent form. When I say good recent form, I mean lengthwise, never far off the action. And like we said, the high felt form Sheldon is slightly superior to the form here in KwaZulu Natal. Marco van Rensburg aboard, he knows this horse exceptionally well. I think it's going to run an absolute cracker. Has to be the horse that sets the standard. As we mentioned, the Gauteng Raiders, they've come out in full force. We've seen Clinton Binder, seen Paul Matchett, and now Lucky Hood of Lockers. So they've really set their sights on coming to KwaZulu Natal and taking home the lion's share. Must be a top contender. If you look at the overall form, I think in the last eight or ten runs, has never been further back than under five lengths. Always yes. two lengths off, two and a half lengths off. Very, very lively affair. Lucky with the Larkus, they fresh off a feature victory on the weekend, so the stable will be on a high. The slight concern is the 711 days since the last victory. But I think they could have found the right race to get number six, Peyton's Tears, back into the winner's enclosure. That'll probably be the horse they all have to set their sights on. I've got a soft spot for number two, Love Bomb. Now, here's a horse as a youngster. I tipped her as my value bet on one of the feature race days at 40 to 1, and she came through. And I've just got a soft spot. She paid a lot of bills on that occasion, and she made the exotics pay very healthily on that day. So, Love Bomb, I've been continually following her. I've just been watching her recently, and she's come down to an 83 from a 108. Her penultimate run, she is held by Mbulla Zana, but she's two and a half kilograms better off. She's the only horse, I think, who's, who's really achieved a rating way above 100. In fact, yes, she is a 108. The rest of them have all achieved under that. 99 Asian comes the closest. So number two, Love Bomb and Peyton's Tears. I think take some swingers and exactors. But Muzi Eni has ridden Love Bomb in the past. And I just get the feeling that she's a horse who's going to rise to the occasion on Monday. Yeah, if she brings her A game here, it'll it'll be no race. You know, she's not easy to assess because sometimes uh, she runs well and you think she's going to run a cracker the next start and she doesn't, but she's definitely got that ability. They never lose that ability. They may lose their form. So I'm expecting Love Bomb to run an absolute cracker. And then maybe for larger trifectas and quartets, throw in a horse like number one, Winter's Destiny from the Dean Canamaya Yard. I know this one is going up in the ratings. Does carry 60 kgs now with Keegan DeMello aboard. But uh, I'm expecting this to finish in the trifectas and quartets. Number one, Winter's Destiny. Yes, when you start looking further, obviously, number one, Winter's Destiny. Then you throw in number four, Mbulla Zana. Number five, Aisling's a live wire. And the way Purple and Kanyezi runs on the poly, all six victories have been achieved on the poly. So there you go. Very, very open race. This puzzle, you're going to have to put together. But number six, Peyton's Tears could be rewarded for her consistency after not seeing the winner's box for 711 days. But like I say, number two, Love Bomb, if she brings her A game, she could be the horse that Peyton's Tears has most to fear from. Uh, my name's Danny Diliberto, founder of Ladles of Love. It was founded back in 2014. Communities we, s we work with are all over the peninsula and um, we're working with 138 beneficiaries now. We've grown exponentially. Um, we've been able to do that because of all the kindness that we have experienced um, from individuals and corporates such as uh, Interbet who just want to be part of the change.